at the moment we have about 3,000 more subscribers than Chelsea Football Club which we think is quite good and there have been times when we have been running level with some of the BBC channels. So probably we are the most successful YouTube channel at the moment that's devoted solely to chemistry. An Israeli newspaper described me in an article. It took me a long time to have it translated, but when I finally did, it said I looked as if I went to the barber and said, give me an Einstein and make it wild. With his trademark mass of wild hair and eccentric presentation style, Professor Martin Polyakov from the University of Nottingham has caught the imagination of a whole new generation of budding chemists. He's part of the team that's put together one of the most successful science attractions on YouTube. The periodic table of videos has attracted millions of hits. Now, with funding from the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, a new set of videos are already underway. And this time, the subject is molecules. Martin says they're very much driven by the feedback they get from their YouTube audience. At this stage, we've launched a few molecule videos. We've done methane, we've done carbon dioxide, when I meet our YouTube fans, I ask them, which molecules would you like to see? And we have quite a range of molecules that we're going to do. Some are quite complicated, others are really very simple, like ammonia. We will probably stretch the definition of molecules so we can look at things like common salts, sodium chloride, which is really a salt rather than a molecule because they're more than just two atoms bonded together. There's so much interesting that you can say about these molecules. Martin says the videos seem to appeal to all age groups and help to raise the profile of chemistry. I've had messages from school children as young as six and from adults. There was one drunk in New York, or he said he was drunk, who had watched the whole periodic table through twice, which is nearly nine hours of video without a stop. So he must have been really quite drunk. We've had quite a few comments posted on YouTube videos saying, I would like to be a student at Nottingham. So I think it is very positive for universities and very positive for the subject. Part of the appeal of the first set of videos is their rather explosive nature, which is thanks to Pete Lysence, a reader in chemistry at the university. His embroidered green lab coat has become his trademark. The green coat just happens to be the coat that organic chemists wear in the laboratory and many many years ago I was an organic chemist so I've sort of grown attached to my green coat and that's where the green coat comes from but this particular green coat was given to me by our undergraduates and they embroidered my name on it and put a Welsh dragon on it because I'm from Wales. The success of the first set of videos has set a high standard of entertainment which Pete is continuing with the latest subject of molecules. Watch out for the chemistry of carbon dioxide. To ask which has been the one which has taken my breath away the most, I suppose, or made me think, wow, I guess a recent experiment that we did where we burnt magnesium in a big block of solid CO2 was really good because it generated lots of gas and it went whoosh, really loud and lots of light and we had great fun doing that. So what does Martin's brother, the film director, Stephen Polyakov, make of it all? He was quoted in an article in the Daily Telegraph really quite positively towards it, and I think he's quite amused. There is a big difference because Stephen, as far as I'm aware, has never appeared in any of his own films, but directs and writes them. In this case, I'm appearing in these films more as an actor the role of film director is taken by Brady Harron, a video journalist who's passionate about science communication. So much of science and so much of what you see in the media is very fake, is very scripted or it's very staid or it's very cliched. We just try and keep everything really real. I never tell the scientists what the other ones are doing. There's never a script. They never know what I'm going to ask. The university and the scientists never watch back what I've done before it goes on YouTube. The first time they see it is probably after a thousand other people have already watched it. They have no control over it. It never gets sanitised. If they make mistakes, if an experiment doesn't work, we keep that in. So I think people watching realise what they're seeing is a really real and genuine thing. 
and that means everything's authentic. Their passion for the subject is not fake, it's authentic. They know it's real because they were really passionate and then the experiment went wrong and if we were faking it we wouldn't show the experiment going wrong. Martin says the first birthday celebration of the videos was a particularly notable occasion. We made two videos. The first one, I suppose the main one, was making a birthday cake. My colleague Sam made the cake in the lab using lab equipment and as far as possible using lab chemicals, sucrose, which is sugar, starch, which is available, and so on. When it came to the egg, it was a bit complicated to try and make a synthetic egg, so we said we'll just use the egg. And so the cake was made, it was baked in a laboratory oven, and it came out smelling gorgeous. But because it was made in the lab, you can't eat it. So we then thought we will have to destroy it, and so we decided that we'd try and blow up the cake with liquid oxygen. And so we all trooped outside and the cake was laid onto a bed of cotton wool, doused with liquid oxygen. It was let off with a long pole, what my colleague Pete calls a match on a stick. And there was a huge whoosh! And the cake shot in the air and then landed again onto the metal plate, virtually unharmed, slightly singed. And so it was a disaster as an experiment. It didn't work, but it was very funny. And then eventually, by pouring liquid oxygen over the cake, we eventually set fire to it. Raising the profile of chemistry and satisfying curiosity is all part of the YouTube experience that they're offering, according to team member and public awareness scientist Dr Sam Tang. With the molecular videos, we've already done some simple molecules like methane and carbon dioxide, which has hopefully not only made the public you know, appreciate the molecules more, it's, it's actually sparked quite a fierce debate when you look on the YouTube comments, they end up talking about climate change a lot, which goes to show that something which might seem quite frivolous and fun actually has a, a serious side to it, which is, is brilliant, it's, it's more than what we expected. Sometimes we'll respond to demand from you know, viewer requests, other times it'll be a case of, well, this has just broken out in the news, and the genius of, of being able to do a project like this is that we respond to news articles very quickly. Um, within, I think it was four hours of the Copernicium being named or discovered, we actually had a video up online on, on YouTube. Another member of the team, Dr Debbie Kays, says the videos really give people a chance to experience chemistry in action. We're showing people that don't get access to, to much in the way of experimental chemistry. We're showing people samples of, of elements, that's where it started obviously, and what elements do. And now it's obviously what compounds do. And these are compounds that people may never come across, but are of, of general interest. And also hopefully will help people to discover things about you know, stuff they use in everyday life that they might not know. So actually I think it's quite relevant to people. And it's also good because people write in and they, and they say they've, you know, they were never allowed to do this in school, but it's like reignited their interest in chemistry that maybe, maybe got killed off in school because that actually happens to some people. So with the next set of videos on molecules well underway, it looks like Martin and his team could have the makings of another hit series that will continue to raise the profile of chemistry and delight people of all ages. I think the message we want to get across is that chemistry is fun and that also it can be quite a good and satisfying career. And so the advantage of having a big range of ages among our presenters that people can see chemists of all sorts of different ages. They can see students at various ages, at various stages of their career, and they can see me as the professor at the end, and they can see that we're all still enjoying ourselves. And I suppose one of the nicest messages that we got was from a chemist that I know in America who said that his son, who was, I think, aged about eight or nine, had started watching our videos and told his class at school. And now at school, or at that time then, all the children were asking, which is your favourite element and why, rather than discussing the latest programme that they'd seen on television. You can find the videos on YouTube by doing a search on the Periodic Table of Videos and at www.periodicvideos.com forward slash.